Hi guys, today we got a chance to talk to the director of SMHRD. So thank you very much, ma'am, for coming to this other table and talking to us because we normally have seen you from the other side of the table. So I want to ask you some very informal uh, uh, questions about your college, about MBA preparation in general, the life at MBA colleges, and what good things you are doing at your college. So ma'am, I want to start with a complaint first. Ke why your GDPA process is so tough to crack? Because I've seen, if you compare with every college, the most difficult GDPA process to crack is symbiosis in general. And when you talk about SMHRD, that's the most toughest to crack. So is it intentional to get it crack or you want the good students to come in? What is the main so, agenda? Uh, I mean, I would take this not as a complaint, but <laughs> as a compliment. Uh, because, you know, every student at SMHRD, we feel is handpicked by us. And we want to give every student enough amount of um, you know time to be able to understand who he is or she is as an individual. Will he or she be able to fit in to the culture of SEMHRD? Is the student competent enough to be able to complete the entire course according to what we call is assurance of learning? And for us, it is one life we have to take care of. Okay, so for us, GDPI process, GDPI, which we usually say group discussion and personal inter uh, interaction, uh, is uh, not a tick mark activity. For us, it is a candid conversation which we have with every aspirant. And it is, uh, you know, those finer nuances which we look in the student because this student is going to bear the tag of SEMHRD for the rest of his life. True. So I wouldn't say it is tough, but I would definitely say we go a little more into details before we accept any student to be a permanent part of the SEMHRD family. So true, true. That's why I was talking to students also. They say it's not a group, it's not a personal interview, it's more of a personal interaction. Absolutely. You nailed it right. Because, you know, uh, in an interview, uh, you are looking at stressing out the candidate. We are not interested in putting any stress. We call it interaction. And calling this entire process as an interaction is a conscious decision which we have taken. So it's not to understand how great we are as an institution. No. It is to understand what best we can take out of the candidate. What is the potential of this particular individual to make a mark you know, in the business that he gets into. A lot of our students also get into entrepreneurship. So it is not, say, an entrepreneurial mindset uh, which you know one really, really needs to only focus on if you are an entrepreneur you know, on your way or you have that kind of a setting uh, in your family. No, no. So this is a mindset which we need to carry. And this is what we look into the candidates. So it is absolutely a stress-free uh, place where a student is given. So if and uh, if you know, at any point in time, a person feels that SEMHRD interviews are really difficult to crack. Yes, it will be difficult to crack if you rehearse and come. We don't want actors. We don't want uh, people who will fake it for five minutes. That is why our interviews don't last for five minutes. Our interviews last for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. And then it becomes a candid conversation. Mm -hmm. So anybody who prepares and comes as a rote learner will find it difficult. Anyone who genuinely has a conversation with the person who is interacting with you will definitely be able to crack it. Good. And can be caught, can be easily caught when he is lying or when his trained words are speaking, this Absolutely. tone will change. Yes. Right. Ma'am, it's called the first impression, last impression. So how much percentage you think will be the first impression for, for, for a candidate? But as I was like, like the moment I see a candidate, like he's a good candidate, and yeah, the first couple of minutes of interaction, you feel that? Uh, see, I definitely feel first impression is uh, very important. But that's not the only important thing. Right. Yeah. First impression just helps me build the conversation. But Good. if that first impression, you are showing a lot of positive interaction, then 
there is enough and more chance that the conversation moves in a direction where you and the person interacting with you from the other side may feel yes you are a good candidate to move ahead but believe me by the time and uh, you know when all our interviewers speak to the candidates we choose our interviewers also very wisely so i definitely know i cannot be in 18 20 different uh, zoom sessions or classroom sessions to pick up my student but i ensure i train the interviewers so that every student gets the same experience when he or she is sitting for the interview and that becomes more important so first impression yes is important but believe me that's not the only impression that stays in our mind what stays in our mind is the interactions we have over those 20 25 minutes with the candidate correct 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 and then is there any checklist kind of thing ki you have to be smart or you have to be good in com skills or it or two three secrets you can tell us so that we can improve and i can it can help me crack yeah, the so uh, if you ask me you know uh, these are uh, not uh, our trade secrets but i feel uh, anyone who aspires to get into a business school yeah should obviously be presentable should obviously have clarity of thought and the moment you have clarity of thought automatically there is clarity of speech so it's not a rocket science which we expect it is day to day acumen which one looks for in any b school candidate or any candidate who wishes to pursue higher education yeah a person who has shown resilience a person who has um, shown you know a uh, growth mindset a person who is willing to learn a person who is willing to take up the challenges a person who is willing to come out of his comfort zone to be able to move ahead in life you know so we always talk of any student whether you are a medical student or an engineering student or a b school student you should be willing to become a student once more learn again yeah and learn again be a lifelong learner you know have the mindset to be open to a new culture and if you look at the diversity of scmhrd today we have students from more than 24 different states at scmhrd now these 24 different states within india uh, shows you enough and more diversity so it's like a mini india you enter into right in on the first day of your experience in the b school so you should be open to learn and i think this is what we look in the candidate so clarity of thought clarity of speech critical thinking obviously and all this is uh, not my trade secret obviously this is something anyone today will look for right this right. is up open in the you know forums so our conversations obviously are around this but very importantly our conversations move in a direction where you are putting your genuine self in front of the person who is interacting with you and i think being genuine correct, correct. is a very important attribute we look for in students correct and ma'am uh, next question is about uh, whether you want me to be already prepared for i want to do marketing finance operations or it is fine for me in the interview to say i'm not yet decided where i want to be uh, i'm to be uh, very frank with you we never ask a student what specialization do you wish to get into none of our panelists will ever ask you what specialization do you intend to get into because we understand life itself is a journey of growth and i do not wish to bracket my students in any one particular specialization in fact if you look at scmhrd yeah we are in existence for the last 30 years and if you look at the degree which we give a degree says master of business administration it will never bracket you saying hr finance marketing or operations we never do that and today we talk about the new education policy where there is no question of bracketing students Correct. you have enough and more potential and uh, i practice psychometry and uh, i live psychometry every day 
and we always have seen you know interests evolve as a student we would have seen that you wanted to get into something in the first year and maybe second year you want to do something very different in fact if you look at uh, symbiosis international university uh, we have eight faculties at the university one of the eight faculties is the faculty of management under faculty of management scmhrd is one of the most prominent b schools Correct. now at the university we boast of having a multidisciplinary education and so if we are so keen on multidisciplinary education we are absolutely fine when the student comes and says look i have still not decided so it's fine from a student's point absolutely of view absolutely fine because if you decide and know everything then why, why do we need <laughs> scmhrd correct correct correct, uh, correct yeah so it's very important that you just have a open mindset you understand what all opportunities an institution can bring your way and then take a decision right and one unique thing i would like to tell about the scmhrd curriculum uh, while uh, so i am into higher education for the last 22 years and a lot of times i have seen b schools you know uh, immediately in the first semester itself they ask uh, the students to get into various specializations which we strictly avoid at scmhrd first semester is business literacy in the first semester student is given enough and more exposure of all the specializations he is given enough and more exposure about leaders in various specializations we do some kind of psychometry to understand which is the specialization he may have an inclination towards however there is no straight jacketing right. there are electives there is a lot of uh, you know um, understanding which the students have by way of each of the domains they can take electives from various programs they can take electives within various specializations and it is like a multidisciplinary approach within the scmhrd framework which we have tried to build in and my students obviously i do not want any student to be in that particular domain all his life because all of us know if you want to go ahead to a vp level ceo level or even own a company you should know everything true hr marketing finance operations we don't bracket our students and we will never do it and i feel all these brackets are there for the first 3 to 5 years after 5 years nobody even knows ki maine kya kar raha hu aur kya kiya tha absolutely absolutely correct correct now ma'am there are three programs in our institute and me as a student normally get confused ki main yahan apply karu ki wo apply karu so if they ask me i normally say ki teen apply kar do hmm. so uh, is there a good advice to apply for all the three programs and first one we talk about all the three programs what these three programs yeah, are so, and then we go into that part uh, yeah so uh, yes scmhrd has three programs but i don't think the student needs to be confused about it uh, our first program is uh, a program which we started scmhrd with and that's the mba program you know where we have specialization in hr marketing operations and finance here if you see we don't have any criteria for work experience as such you know uh, a student from any uh, discipline and a student from uh, any kind of work experience whether you are a fresher or you have uh, some kind of work experience everybody is free to apply for this particular program uh, our second program is in the area of infrastructure development and management uh, now uh, all these years we had only eligibility of an engineer who could apply for this particular program so it was not open for any other discipline but over a period of time we've seen that uh, not only engineers but you know if it is a student who has experience in the area of uh, supply chain has experience in the area of operations uh, you know these two uh, types of candidates who have experience of at least about 1 year we've opened up the uh, program for these candidates as well whereas our third program which is business analytics it is open only to students who have 2 years of work experience the okay. eligibility to apply for this program is 2 years of work ex so if some candidate asks me should i apply for all three programs yeah i would say if you have work ex of 2 years correct and if you are specifically an engineer who is into operations and uh, possibly uh, supply chain okay 
or you are a non engineer and who has worked for one year in operations or supply chain and logistics then you can apply for all three programs but when you look at the focus of each of the three programs yeah the first program will give you a mba with some you know with electives in the area of hr marketing finance and operations and uh, we have as an institution taken a conscious decision of not giving business analytics as one of the electives in our regular mba program because for us business analytics is a serious program with professionals who are you know who already come in with those with the business acumen who come in with the business literacy and are consciously taking a decision to venture into the field of business analytics and in scm hrd i think we have the first mover advantage where ours is the only program which will ask you for two years of work experience before you enroll for a business analytics program and that work it has so, to be related to ba or uh, no that notice? is not the requirement when it comes to relating uh, to that particular domain uh, what we want is somebody who has seen business Correct. you know and then it becomes very easy for the person to relate to the analytical piece Part of it right. you know so yes if you ask me i would say yes apply for all three programs if you fit into the eligibility of all three apply for all three because as i said you know we don't straight jacket and ultimately once you are a part of scm hrd you then see the spectrum of diversity which exists on campus you are able to interact with freshers you are able to interact with engineers you are able to interact with uh, experienced students and imagine in scm hrd we have so many students every year who become a part of our alumni base and you getting into that alumni base and you getting into that network that itself is great and we have 14 committees on campus these committees are not program driven these committees are scm hrd driven so automatically if you get into part uh, you know if you are a part of these committees you get to interact with so many different types of individuals So, so if you want to apply if you are eligible for all three i would suggest definitely you should apply for, for all three and when the jobs are common the placement cycle is common hmm. so then does not matter whichever whichever area i want to where have my interest lies i should go for that area absolutely and then and prob- we encourage that so when the company comes on campus they are open to hire from any three they can choose uh, so if you see our cohorts for all the three programs also yeah company definitely is open to hire from all the three uh, in fact companies have started to a uh, value that you know scm hrd is the only institution which has actually started a program in the area of infrastructure development and management see we had sdgs which started uh, actually people started to talk about it since 2016 and 17 and you know we say by 2030 or uh, we should be able to fulfill the sdg goals we started infrastructure development and management in 2011 and that is the time we said we should have talent which will contribute to a developing country like india that was our vision and we didn't want to make it a big program we said nahi 40 our cohort we wanted to concentrate only on 40 but mm-hmm. the program demand improved and we said 60 and we have made it a point to say no these are 60 people whom we want to train in this particular domain and then we in 2017 we added a program in business analytics which was again the need of the r in fact when we added business analytics we had started a post graduate program in business analytics uh, you know uh, as a one year residential program we got insights from the industry saying why don't you convert this into a two years mba and in 2017 we consciously converted it into an mba uh, program and so companies are more than willing to mm-hmm. look at talent from all the three programs and they really appreciate this fact that not only a marketing hr or a finance operations person but somebody who can get into infrastructure development and you see the budget that has been given for infrastructure now and i'm really very happy and proud that my student is contributing towards this particular domain so companies are happy we are happy correct correct my, my last question revolves around uh, MBA is obviously said the industry is said we now in a stable phase of MBA 
So then the question comes, what next? So uh, it can be skill-based programs, it can be MDP programs, or a tailor-made program for various organizations, or an online MBA. So is there any kind of a future in that? Or are you doing any kind of a, a plan to have these kind of things in the future? Uh, see, what we first believe uh, in is do the best in what you have started. And that is our first priority. And uh, this is what we have seen. So SCMHRD, as I said, is in existence for the last 30 years. Yeah, if you look at the mandates of the university uh, and the UGC, AICT, there, there are NAC-related mandates, you know, and as uh, we are a part of the university, the Symbiosis International University, uh, we definitely get on to this cycle of NAC. But what SCMHRD has done is we went in to AACSB as a value-added quality initiative. This was not something which was thrusted on us. We were not bound to do it. It was not compulsory. But in 2014, we ventured on to doing ACSB accreditation. And we continued the process. And in 2020, we were actually able to get ACSB. So if you ask me uh, what next, I would feel as a institution which talks so much about quality, it's very important for us to sustain that quality, even in the long run. And we have been doing that. In 2020, we got the, uh, we got the accreditation. In 25, we are up for reaccreditation. And this is the journey we want to venture into. And uh, SCMHRD stands for the Symbiosis Center for Human Resource Development. You know, so management and human resource development. So developing human beings in all walks of life. And so definitely venturing into doing management development programs. So we don't uh, always uh, talk of, you know, one size fits all. It never does. So if, even when we talk about this human resource development, we don't want to do it only for educational institutions. We want to exist so that we even talk about development in the corporate world. And so we look at the uh, insights from the corporates. We look at, you know, uh, what are their requirements. And we make tailor-made programs, client-based programs. And we talk about rolling across these initiatives through management development programs. If you ask me, ma'am, uh, online education, then no, SMHRD will not get into online education. Uh, we are a part of the Symbiosis International University, and online education is uh, not in the agenda of SCMHRD. Okay. But holding on to the ACSB accreditation, you know, looking at ranking, looking at research, uh, you know, looking at uh, the holistic development of the student is something that SCMHRD will going forward a talk of and uh, along with the three programs which we have you know for the regular MBAs which is residential uh, we have another uh, program which is only for the working professionals and as I said uh, if you are into education then you know as an educationist you should be able to touch lives in a meaningful way not only with people who can spare those two years full time with you but also with aspirations which were curbed a few years ago because they didn't have the bandwidth to go in for higher education. And to manage these aspirations, we have 30 students who come in as uh, you know working professionals on our MBA executive program, which happens only on a Saturday and Sunday. Again, we are a bit strict when it comes to the academic rigor, you know. You have to have the required number of attendance to be able to write your papers. You have to be able to complete all the internal, external evaluations. I'm you, hearing this since morning. Yeah. I would say so morning if you I can't do it, and uh, believe me, you know, we've always said there is no substitute for hard work. There is no substitute for rigor. So at any given point, yeah, we will not reduce the rigor of the program. We will increase the support, but not reduce the rigor. So uh, uh, my uh, two bits for you know all the aspirants is, if you want to get into a furnace, you know, 
which will brighten your future, then SCMHRD is the best place to be. Because once you get in, you come out solid, you come out pure, and you come out in a way which will be able to withstand uh, you know, all the odds. And something which I uh, always talk of while we initiate any activity, see, we don't believe in preparing a road for our students. We believe in preparing the student for hmm. any road any he road. takes. Very nice. Very nice. You know, so that's the way we move off, move ahead in the academic journey. And that is what we believe in. So anybody who has the metal, who has the grit to get into a stiff competition, I think SEMHRD is the best place to be. So that's Great, a little bit Great. from my side. Thank you, ma'am. Thank Thanks. you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. But I would like, like to compliment them. Whomever I've talked to, they all told what next, what next. This is past. This is, I want to go there. So they want to change the DNA. So I'm meeting after a long time someone who wants to stick to the DNA that we started for this and this is our core competence. Yes. I will focus on this. Yes. Thank, thank you so thank much. You, thank you. It was really, really Insane nice interacting with you. Thanks.